Water, what is it? A simple molecule, yet so profoundly integral to our very existence. We find it everywhere on our Earth, in majestic oceans, serene lakes and rivers that carve the landscape. Every creature, every plant, every form of life as we know it depends on this vital substance. But water is more than just a vital necessity for survival. It symbolizes a deeper connection, offering a sense of peace and belonging. When we observe the clear, fresh flow of gushing water, a unique tranquility takes over. Its purity and vitality infuse a refreshing coolness into our hearts, cleansing the weariness of life and immersing us in a moment of serene bliss. It almost appears as if someone had placed it there, not solely to sustain us, but to enchant us, reminding us of our connection to something greater. But consider, too, the transformation brought about by rainfall. As the heavens open and life-giving droplets descend, the earth revives. The intense greenery of the forests, once dry and parched, now erupts into a vibrant symphony of life. Each raindrop mirrors a world brimming with energy, transforming a dormant landscape into a sanctuary of peace. Witnessing this renewal brings a profound tranquility and a sense of awe at nature's resilient beauty. Imagine a person lost in the desert, days without a single drop of water, the scorching sun, the endless sands, a relentless quest for survival. Then, a miraculous sight, not a clear spring, but a mere puddle of muddy water. In this moment, the true value of water becomes clear. It's a lifeline, a precious gift. Without it, we humans cannot survive even a day. Our dependence on water is profound, ingrained in every cell of our being. But have you ever wondered, could the same water that sparked life on our blue planet hold the key to life beyond? Might the same molecule that sustains us here on Earth be the harbinger of life in the vast cosmos? We will start from Earth's ancient times, when vast oceans nurtured the budding seeds of life. Moving through the ages, we'll see how civilizations harnessed this precious resource, building societies and monumental achievements around it. Our focus will then shift to the intricate ways in which humans and animals have adapted to and depended on water, from sustaining health to fostering rich ecosystems. Tracing the journey of water through cycles that replenish and sustain life on our planet, we eventually cast our gaze to the stars, contemplating the possibility of water and life beyond Earth. This exploration is a testament to water's vital role in the interconnected web of existence. Water, a simple molecule, is the cornerstone of life as we know it. Its chemical name is H2O, indicative of its composition. Two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. But it's the unique way these atoms are arranged that endows water with its remarkable properties. Observe the shape of the water molecule. It's not linear. The two hydrogen atoms are bonded to the oxygen at a distinctive angle. This angular structure leads to an uneven distribution of electrical charge, creating what scientists call a polar molecule. The oxygen atom, more electro-negative than hydrogen, pulls the shared electrons closer to itself. This creates a slight negative charge near the oxygen and a corresponding positive charge near the hydrogens. It's this polarity that is at the heart of water's life-giving properties. In a body of water, each molecule doesn't act independently. Instead, the slightly positive hydrogen atoms of one molecule are attracted to the slightly negative oxygen atoms of neighboring molecules. This attraction, known as hydrogen bonding, is much weaker than a covalent bond, but is crucial to water's behavior. Hydrogen bonds constantly break and reform, giving water its fluid nature. 
They also account for water's unusually high boiling point and its ability to store heat, moderating Earth's climate. Even ice's lesser density compared to liquid water is due to the way these bonds arrange molecules in a lattice. Let's now turn to water's remarkable chemical and physical properties, each a direct consequence of its unique molecular arrangement. First, consider water's high specific heat capacity. This property means water can absorb a lot of heat without a significant increase in temperature. Think of the oceans absorbing the sun's warmth. This capacity buffers Earth's climate, leading to more moderate temperatures, particularly near coastal areas. Next, there's surface tension. It's a property that arises from water molecules being attracted to each other more than to the air above. This tension allows water droplets to form and enables insects to effortlessly glide across the water surface. It's a delicate yet vital balancing act of intermolecular forces. Capillary action is another fascinating property. It's the ability of water to flow in narrow spaces against gravity, a result of its adhesive and cohesive forces. This is what allows water to travel from the roots to the leaves in plants, sustaining life even against the pull of gravity. Water's versatility is further displayed in its three states, solid, liquid and gas. Each state plays a critical role in our planet's climate system. Ice, less dense than liquid water due to its molecular arrangement, floats, forming ice caps that reflect solar radiation and regulate sea levels. In its liquid form, water is a dynamic force, carving landscapes, supporting diverse ecosystems and serving as the cradle of life. As a vapor, water is a key player in the weather system. It transports heat across the globe, forms clouds and returns to the earth as precipitation, completing the water cycle that supports all life forms. About 4.5 billion years ago, our planet Earth was formed from a cloud of gas and dust. In these early days, the Earth was nothing like the blue planet we know today. It was a boiling mass of molten rock, constantly bombarded by meteorites. Amidst this chaos, the first traces of water began to appear. Scientists believe that icy comets and water-rich meteorites bombarded the young Earth, bringing water to its surface. Imagine a world where every impact might have carried the precious cargo of water, slowly accumulating to form our oceans. As the Earth's surface started to cool, something remarkable happened. Water vapor began to condense into rain, and for thousands of years, it rained relentlessly. These endless downpours filled the basins and hollows of Earth's rugged surface, giving birth to the first oceans. It's hard to imagine now, but our tranquil blue oceans were once just vast, turbulent puddles growing larger day by day. These early oceans were crucial in stabilizing the climate and creating a habitable environment where life could eventually flourish. But how did life emerge from these ancient waters? The answer lies in the concept of the primordial soup. In these nutrient-rich waters, a series of chemical reactions might have occurred, leading to the formation of simple organic compounds. Over time, these compounds became more complex, eventually giving rise to life as we know it. It's a process that combines chemistry, biology, and a bit of cosmic luck. The role of water was indispensable, serving as the solvent where these life-giving reactions took place. The first life forms were simple, single-celled organisms, invisible to the naked eye. These microscopic pioneers were the ancestors of all life on Earth. From these humble beginnings in the ocean's depths, life evolved into an incredible diversity of forms. Over billions of years, these organisms became more complex, eventually leading to the rich tapestry of life that covers our planet today. 
This incredible journey from single cells to complex beings was only possible because of the nurturing environment provided by water. In the tapestry of human history, water has been a pivotal force, particularly in ancient civilizations where it was harnessed to cultivate prosperity and progress. The ingenuity with which these early societies utilized water is a testament to their understanding of its value and power. Our journey begins in Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers. Here, the Sumerians engineered an elaborate system of canals, dams and sluices to control the unpredictable Tigris and Euphrates. These innovations turned the arid landscape into fertile ground, ushering in the dawn of civilization. Meanwhile, in ancient Egypt, the Nile's predictable flooding was the heartbeat of the society. The Egyptians developed a basin irrigation system, trapping floodwaters and using them to irrigate fields. They meticulously planned their agricultural cycles around the Nile's rhythms, a testament to their profound connection with the river. Next, we marvel at the Roman Empire, a name synonymous with advanced engineering. The Romans constructed over 400 miles of aqueducts, masterpieces of engineering that supplied water to cities and towns across the empire. Their innovative use of arches and gravity allowed water to flow across vast distances without pumps. But Roman ingenuity didn't stop at aqueducts. Their sewer system, the Cloaca Maxima, was a pioneering development in urban sanitation, crucial for the health and hygiene of Rome's burgeoning population. Turning to the east, ancient China's Dujiangyan irrigation system, built over 2,200 years ago, is still in use today. This marvel of engineering, created by Li Bing, uses a series of levees and channels to distribute the Min River's water without the need for a dam, preventing floods and irrigating the fertile Chengdu Plain. In India, the sophistication of ancient water systems is epitomized in their step wells, like the Chand Bauri. These were not just water sources, but also communal gathering places, adorned with intricate carvings and architectural finesse. In the Islamic world, water was revered for its purity and aesthetics. The Moors in Spain, for instance, built exquisite water gardens, like those in the Alhambra. These gardens are not just artistic marvels, but also embody deep spiritual symbolism, reflecting Islamic views of paradise with their flowing water and serene ambience. Water is not just a resource. It is the very essence of our being, a crucial component for maintaining good health and well-being. Every cell, tissue and organ in our bodies requires water to function properly. Water aids in digestion, absorbs and transports nutrients, regulates body temperature and helps flush toxins from our system. It lubricates our joints, cushions vital organs and gives our skin its healthy glow. The human body is composed of about 60% water and this balance is essential for survival. Even a small drop in our body's water content can lead to dehydration, affecting cognitive and physical performance. This is why staying hydrated is vital, especially during physical activity or in hot climates. Moreover, water plays a key role in disease prevention. Adequate hydration helps prevent kidney stones, constipation and urinary tract infections. It also supports the body's natural defense mechanisms, keeping the immune system functioning optimally. Interestingly, the human brain is approximately 70% water. This high content is crucial for cognitive functions such as focus, memory and balance. Dehydration can lead to headaches, fatigue and decreased alertness, impacting mental health and daily productivity. Building on our understanding of water's crucial role in human health, let's expand our view to the broader tapestry of life on Earth. Water is not just vital for us, it is the lifeblood of Earth's biodiversity.
In the oceans, where water is abundant but saline, marine life has evolved to thrive in these conditions. Consider the ingenious osmoregulation of marine mammals like whales and seals. They have adapted to drink salt water with specialized kidneys that filter out excess salt. This adaptation highlights the importance of water in even the most saline environments, as these majestic creatures balance their internal water levels with the surrounding sea. Coral reefs, vibrant and bustling ecosystems, owe their existence to water. These underwater cities, built by coral polyps, rely on water for nutrients, gas exchange and light penetration for photosynthesis. The diversity of life in coral reefs, from fish to crustaceans, is a direct reflection of the nurturing power of water. In freshwater ecosystems, the story is different but equally compelling. Rivers and lakes support an array of life forms, each adapted to the unique qualities of fresh water. For instance, salmon are known for their incredible life cycle, migrating from fresh water to the ocean and back to fresh water to spawn. This journey is a remarkable adaptation to the varying characteristics of water environments. The adaptability of life to diverse water conditions underscores water's role as the essence of life on Earth. Whether it's a camel in the desert conserving every drop or a shark in the ocean balancing salt water's effects, each species' relationship with water is a testament to its importance. Photosynthesis is the miraculous process by which green plants and certain other organisms transform light energy, usually from the sun, into chemical energy stored in glucose. Central to this process is water. Absorbed by plant roots from the soil, water travels through the plant to the leaves, where it meets its destiny. Inside the leaf, in the chloroplasts, water molecules are split into hydrogen and oxygen in a reaction powered by sunlight. This reaction releases oxygen as a byproduct, which is expelled into the atmosphere, replenishing the very air we breathe. The hydrogen, on the other hand, plays a key role in synthesizing glucose, the plant's fuel for growth. The journey of water doesn't end in the leaf. The split oxygen contributes to atmospheric oxygen, but water's story intertwines with the water cycle, a global system that recycles water in various forms. Through evaporation, water rises from the surface of oceans, rivers, and even leaves ascending to the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, water vapor cools and condenses into clouds, eventually falling back to Earth as precipitation. This cycle is not just a marvel of nature. It's a lifeline for all terrestrial life forms. It replenishes freshwater sources, irrigates crops, and maintains the habitats that countless species, including humans, depend on for survival. For humans, water is indispensable. Beyond drinking, it's integral to sanitation, agriculture and industry. The water cycle, powered by the sun and propelled by the natural functions of our planet, ensures that water reaches us, filtered and renewed. Without it, life as we know it would cease to exist. As we've journeyed through the annals of history, We've seen the profound role water plays on Earth, the essence of life, a cradle for civilizations. It's clear that water is not just part of Earth's story. It's central to maintaining the delicate balance of our living world. But now, let's broaden our horizon, venturing beyond the confines of our blue planet. For centuries, it was believed that Earth alone, in its splendid isolation, harbored water a unique oasis in the vast desert of space. This notion framed our understanding of life's potential in the cosmos, tethering the search for life to the search for water. But what if Earth is not the only water world? What if, within our own solar system, there are other havens of this precious molecule? The turning point came with the advent of space exploration, 
probes, rovers and telescopes, our eyes and ears in the heavens, began to unravel a story more complex and wondrous than we had ever imagined. Mars, with its polar ice caps and signs of ancient riverbeds, whispered tales of a wetter past. The moon, long thought to be arid, surprised us with ice in its shadowed craters. But it's not just Mars and the moon. Farther from the sun, moons like Jupiter's Europa and Saturn's Enceladus reveal secrets of subsurface oceans hidden beneath icy shells. These discoveries suggest that water is more common than previously thought, hinting at the potential for life, or at least the conditions that could sustain it. The Moon, Earth's only natural satellite, has captivated human imagination for millennia. It's the fifth largest moon in the solar system and plays a crucial role in influencing Earth's tides and stabilizing the planet's axial tilt. The moon's surface, covered with craters, highlands and ancient lava plains called Maria, provides a record of the solar system's early history. Its synchronous rotation means one side, the near side, always faces Earth, while the far side remained unseen by humans until the Space Age. The Moon's geology reveals a violent past marked by asteroid impacts and volcanic activity. Features such as the Tycho Crater and the vast Oceanus Procellarum offer insights into its complex history. Human exploration began with the Soviet lunar missions and NASA's Apollo program, which brought back lunar rocks, significantly advancing our understanding of lunar geology. Recent missions by various countries have focused on exploring the Moon's poles and far side. Contrary to early beliefs that the Moon was bone dry, recent missions and studies have confirmed the presence of water ice, especially in permanently shadowed craters at the poles. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and India's Chandrayaan-1 mission provided strong evidence of water ice by detecting hydrogen-rich anomalies and reflective properties consistent with ice. Moreover, the SOFIA Observatory confirmed water molecules in sunlit areas, suggesting that water might be more widespread than previously thought. These discoveries have profound implications for future lunar exploration and potential colonization, as water can be a critical resource for human missions, potentially serving as drinking water or being split into hydrogen and oxygen for fuel and breathing air. While the Moon's environment is harsh, with extreme temperature variations and no significant atmosphere to offer protection from cosmic and solar radiation, the discovery of water ice opens up new possibilities. Although the current conditions are inhospitable to known forms of life, understanding the Moon's water resources is crucial for the feasibility of long-term human presence. Mercury, the smallest terrestrial planet in our solar system, holds a unique position due to its proximity to the Sun. With an orbit that completes in just 88 Earth days, Mercury experiences the most extreme temperature fluctuations of any planet in our solar system. Despite surface temperatures that can soar to 430 degrees Celsius during the day, Mercury can plummet to a frigid negative 180 degrees Celsius at night due to its thin atmosphere. Characterized by a dense composition, Mercury has a large metallic core and a silicate mantle and crust, featuring a surface marked by craters similar to our Moon. This planet's exploration has been significantly advanced by NASA's Mariner 10 and MESSENGER missions, which have provided detailed maps and data on its magnetic field, geology and exosphere. Against all odds, Mercury hosts water ice within its shadowed polar craters. These regions, never touched by sunlight, maintain temperatures low enough to sustain water ice, as confirmed by Earth-based radar observations and NASA's MESSENGER mission. The presence of water ice, detailed in research published by the Science and Nature journals, 
suggests that volatile substances can survive even in the harsh conditions of the inner solar system. The discovery of water ice on Mercury raises fascinating questions about the potential for life in the solar system. While the harsh surface conditions and extreme temperature variations make the existence of life as we know it unlikely on Mercury itself, the water ice deposits in polar craters present a valuable record of organic compounds and volatiles. These findings could provide insights into the chemical processes that are foundational to life, offering clues to the early solar system's conditions and the distribution of organic compounds across planets. Venus, often dubbed Earth's sister planet due to its similar size and proximity, presents an environment vastly different from our own. With a dense carbon dioxide atmosphere and clouds of sulfuric acid, Venus showcases the runaway greenhouse effect in its most extreme form, leading to surface temperatures averaging around 475 degrees Celsius. This inferno-like condition makes Venus the hottest planet in our solar system, despite being the second planet from the Sun. Venus's rotation is peculiar. It spins slowly in the opposite direction to most planets, including Earth, making a day on Venus longer than a Venusian year. This slow rotation contributes to its extreme atmospheric conditions and temperature. Venus has been the subject of fascination and study for centuries, but it was the advent of space exploration that brought significant insights. Missions like NASA's Magellan, which mapped the planet's surface with radar in the early 1990s, and ESA's Venus Express, which studied its atmosphere and weather patterns, have provided valuable data on Venus's geology, atmosphere and climatic conditions. These missions revealed a volcanic landscape with thousands of volcanoes, vast plains and high mountain ranges indicating geological activity. Contrary to its current hellish conditions, Venus might have once harbored oceans of liquid water. Scientific models suggest that Venus could have had a climate suitable for liquid water for up to two billion years after its formation. However, the runaway greenhouse effect led to the evaporation of these oceans, with water molecules dissociating in the upper atmosphere and hydrogen escaping to space. Today, the water on Venus exists mainly in the form of vapor traces within its thick atmosphere, as detected by missions like Venus Express. The extreme surface conditions on Venus make the potential for life as we know it nearly impossible. However, the discovery of phosphine gas in Venus's clouds by astronomers using the James Clark Maxwell Telescope and Atacama Large Millimeter Array sparked a wave of excitement and speculation. Phosphine is considered a potential biosignature because, on Earth, it's produced by microbial life in oxygen-free environments. This discovery, though controversial and in need of further confirmation, opens the possibility of microbial life existing in the temperate high-altitude cloud decks of Venus, where temperatures and pressures are more Earth-like. Mars, a world that whispers the promise of discovery and challenges the bounds of our exploration spirit. Cloaked in red dust, it stands as the fourth planet from the Sun, a mere 225 million kilometers away at its closest approach to Earth. This distance, vast yet reachable, sets the stage for one of humanity's most ambitious endeavors. The journey to Mars, a feat of human ingenuity and perseverance, is no small undertaking. With current propulsion technologies, a voyage to the Red Planet can take approximately seven months, a testament to both the challenge and allure of Martian exploration. Space agencies around the globe are developing advanced propulsion systems to reduce travel time, making the journey faster and more feasible for the astronauts who will embark on this historic mission. Amidst the silent valleys and dried riverbeds that hint at Mars's watery past, the planet's surface is marked by features of monumental scale and beauty. 
None is more awe-inspiring than Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain in our solar system. Rising majestically 22 kilometers above the Martian surface, Olympus Mons is a shield volcano that dwarfs Mount Everest, Earth's tallest peak. Its base spans an area comparable to the size of Arizona, and its caldera, the crater at the summit, is large enough to hold the entire city of London. This colossal mountain is a testament to the volcanic activity that once shaped Mars, providing valuable clues about the planet's geological history and inner workings. The formation of this mountain is a story billions of years in the making, a saga of lava flows stacking layer upon layer, undisturbed by the tectonic movements that reshape Earth's landscape. Its sheer size is due, in part, to Mars's lower gravity, allowing for the construction of geological structures that would be impossible on our own planet. Scientists study Olympus Mons not just as a marvel of the natural world, but as a window into the processes that have sculpted Mars over eons. But what beckons us to this distant world? The quest for water, the essence of life as we know it, dominates our Martian explorations. Mars presents a riddle, its surface etched with the scars of ancient rivers, lake beds, and what appears to be flood channels, painting a portrait of a planet that once harbored liquid water in abundance. Our robotic emissaries, roving the Martian landscape, have sent back undeniable evidence. Orbiters like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter have spotted signs of hydrated minerals and seasonal changes that hint at liquid water's presence today. The discovery of ice caps at the poles and beneath the planet's surface offers compelling evidence of water's enduring legacy on Mars. These findings are not mere footnotes in our exploration. They are beacons guiding our search for life. The presence of water on Mars fuels our speculation and hope for life beyond Earth. Microbial life, if it exists or ever did, might find refuge in the subsurface where liquid water could still flow, shielded from the harsh surface conditions. The exploration rovers, including the latest Perseverance, are equipped to uncover the secrets lying beneath, drilling samples and analyzing Martian soil for signs of past or present life. The implications of these discoveries are profound. As we plan manned missions to Mars, the knowledge that water exists provides a cornerstone for future colonization efforts. Water can be transformed into breathable oxygen and fuel, not just sustaining life, but also powering our continued exploration. It heralds a new era where Mars could become a second home for humanity, a base for further cosmic voyages. Water is the lifeblood of any terraforming initiative. Its presence on Mars, primarily as ice, offers a tantalizing glimpse into the possibility of reshaping the Martian environment. The challenge lies in unlocking these vast reserves of ice, transforming them into liquid water to create lakes, rivers and oceans that could cover the Martian landscape once again. The process of terraforming Mars would involve monumental engineering feats. One proposed method involves giant mirrors placed in orbit around Mars, reflecting sunlight onto the polar ice caps to induce melting. Another idea is the use of powerful greenhouse gases to warm the planet, releasing CO2 trapped in the soil and polar caps thereby thickening the atmosphere and raising global temperatures to melt ice into water. Yet the endeavor to make Mars habitable raises profound ecological and ethical questions. Terraforming Mars would not only alter its environment forever, but also redefine our responsibility as stewards of new worlds. The introduction of Earth life to Mars starting with microorganisms and eventually plants, would begin a complex ecological experiment on a planetary scale. Despite the challenges, the potential benefits of a terraformed Mars are immense. A habitable Mars could serve as a sanctuary for humanity, 
a solution to overpopulation and a new frontier for scientific discovery and cultural expansion. The dream of terraforming Mars with water is a vision of hope, a testament to human ingenuity in the face of cosmic challenges. Leaving behind the dusty reds of Mars, we venture deeper into the solar system, to the realm of giants. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, is a world of extremes and mysteries. Unlike the rocky terrains of Mars and Earth, Jupiter is a gas giant, composed mainly of hydrogen and helium with no solid surface to call ground. Jupiter is a behemoth, more than 300 times the mass of Earth, with a diameter 11 times that of our planet. This giant's rapid rotation, completing a day in just under 10 hours, creates bands of clouds and violent storms across its atmosphere. Its massive size and gravitational pull have profound effects, influencing the orbits of planets and the fate of comets and asteroids. But to truly appreciate Jupiter, one must delve into the mysteries of its atmosphere, its magnetic field and its role as a guardian of Earth. Jupiter's atmosphere is a tapestry of color and chaos, Composed mainly of hydrogen and helium, it's peppered with traces of water, methane, ammonia and other compounds that create its distinctive bands and storms. Amidst the swirling clouds and tempests that adorn Jupiter's atmosphere, there lies a maelstrom so vast and violent it defies earthly comparison, the Great Red Spot. This colossal storm, larger than Earth itself, has raged for at least 150 years, possibly much longer, a perpetual cyclone that dwarfs any weather phenomenon known to humanity. Imagine, if you will, a tempest so wide that three Earths could lie side by side within its bounds, a hurricane where winds roar at speeds surpassing 400 kilometers per hour, it's as if all of Earth's hurricanes combined into a single, all-consuming vortex, unyielding and ever-present, a true behemoth of nature's fury. The Great Red Spot is not just a storm, it's a testament to the ferocity of Jupiter's atmosphere. Peering into its depths is like looking into the maw of a cosmic beast, a whirlpool of crimson clouds that could swallow nations whole. It's a reminder of the raw power that nature can wield on a planetary scale, unfathomable and terrifying. This giant among storms is more ancient than any living memory, outlasting countless generations. To understand its endurance is to imagine a tempest that began when Shakespeare was writing his plays and continues to rage to this day. It's a storm that has watched empires rise and fall, a silent, swirling sentinel of the solar system. Beneath its swirling clouds, Jupiter hides a heart of metallic hydrogen, creating the strongest magnetic field in the solar system, 20,000 times stronger than Earth's. This magnetic colossus is home to spectacular auroras, brighter and more powerful than those on Earth, visible at its poles. They're fueled not just by the solar wind, but also by the volcanic eruptions of Io, one of its moons, spewing material into space that interacts with this magnetic leviathan. Jupiter's immense gravity acts as a cosmic shield, its position in the solar system protecting the inner planets from the bombardment of comets and asteroids. It's believed that Jupiter's gravitational influence has helped shape the fate of life on Earth, capturing or diverting objects that might otherwise pose a catastrophic threat to our planet. But what of water, that fundamental ingredient of life as we know it? The quest for water takes a different form here. Jupiter itself, with its thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium, is unlikely to harbor water in liquid form. However, it's within Jupiter's domain, among its vast retinue of moons, that the search for water, and potentially life, becomes intriguing. Jupiter is accompanied by a family of over 95 known moons, 
But it's the Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, that capture our imagination. Europa, in particular, stands out as a prime candidate in the search for extraterrestrial water. Beneath its icy surface lies a global ocean, holding more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. The evidence for Europa's ocean comes from a variety of sources, including the Galileo spacecraft's magnetic field measurements, which suggest a conductive layer beneath the ice. This is thought to be a salty ocean, which, because of its interaction with Europa's rocky mantle, could potentially harbor the chemical ingredients necessary for life. The possibility of life in Europa's dark, subsurface ocean ignites the imagination. Here, life, if it exists, would need to be adapted to conditions unimaginable on Earth's surface, possibly thriving around hydrothermal vents, much like those in Earth's own deep oceans. Far from the warm embrace of our Sun lie the guardians of our solar system's outer realms, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. These distant giants, each with their own mysteries, hold within them and their moons the key ingredient for life as we know it, water. But the water in these regions exists in forms and places that challenge our Earth-centric notions of habitability. Saturn, the ringed jewel, is not just an emblem of cosmic beauty, but a celestial body of interest for astrobiologists. Its moon Enceladus, small and icy, jets plumes of water vapor into space from its south pole, hinting at a subsurface ocean warm enough to potentially harbor life. Cassini's flybys through these plumes have detected organic compounds, the building blocks of life, making Enceladus a prime candidate in the search for extraterrestrial life within our own solar system. Uranus stands apart, not just for its sideways rotation, but for its composition, rich in ices of water, ammonia and methane. While Uranus itself presents a hostile environment for life as we know it, its moons, particularly Miranda and Ariel, intrigue scientists with their fractured surfaces and evidence of geological activity, suggesting that, like Enceladus, they too might harbor subsurface oceans. Neptune, the windiest world in our solar system, is a planet enshrouded in mystery. Its largest moon, Triton, orbits in a retrograde direction, hinting at a violent capture long ago. Triton's geysers, spewing nitrogen gas and possibly water from beneath its icy crust, hint at an internal heat source that could allow for subsurface oceans. Though conditions on Triton are extreme, its potential for water raises questions about life's adaptability in the cosmos. Beyond the protective veil of our solar system lies the vast, uncharted expanse of interstellar space, a realm not of void, but of creation. Within this cosmic wilderness, water, far from being a rarity, is a widespread architect playing a critical role in the molecular clouds that are the birthplaces of stars and planets. Molecular clouds, sometimes known as stellar nurseries, are colossal assemblies of gas and dust, hidden in the darkness of space. Within these clouds, temperatures plummet to hundreds of degrees below zero, conditions that foster the formation of water on a galactic scale. The Orion Nebula, a mere 1,350 light-years away, serves as a vivid example. Here, water vapor has been detected in abundance, tracing the flows of gas that will one day coalesce into new solar systems. The alchemy that gives rise to water in these frigid, dense regions is both delicate and complex. Atoms of hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, collide with oxygen atoms on the cold surfaces of interstellar dust grains. These grains, coated with icy mantles, provide the necessary environment for water molecules to form. This process is not merely a matter of chance, but a pervasive feature of the cosmos, 
indicating that water is an intrinsic part of the universe's molecular fabric. As these molecular clouds collapse under gravity, they fragment into clumps that will form stars and their accompanying planets. The water, now embedded in the form of ice on dust grains, is incorporated into the protoplanetary disks that surround these young stars. In these disks, water ice plays a crucial role in the accretion of planetesimals, the building blocks of planets. It acts as a glue, helping to bind together dust and rock to form larger bodies. The distribution of water ice in these disks may determine the habitability of emerging planets, dictating where liquid water oceans can exist and, potentially, where life might arise. Our journey through the cosmos brings us to the frontier of modern astronomy, the study of exoplanets. These planets, orbiting stars far beyond our own Sun, offer a new field in which to search for the universal solvent of life, water. With over 4,000 exoplanets discovered to date, our methods for detecting these distant worlds and uncovering their secrets have become both sophisticated and revealing. The quest to find water on exoplanets employs a variety of ingenious techniques. Transit spectroscopy, one of the most powerful tools in our arsenal, analyzes the light from a star as it passes through an exoplanet's atmosphere during a transit. This process creates a unique fingerprint in the light, revealing the presence of water vapor and other molecules. Direct imaging, though challenging due to the bright glare of host stars, allows astronomers to capture actual images of exoplanets, discerning atmospheric composition and, in some cases, signs of water. Among the myriad exoplanets discovered, a few stand out as prime candidates in the search for water. The TRAPPIST-1 system, with several Earth-sized planets in the habitable zone of a cool dwarf star, has captivated scientists and the public alike. Observations suggest that some of these planets may have liquid water on their surfaces, a prerequisite for life as we know it. Another notable world is K218b, a super-Earth where Hubble Space Telescope data has revealed the possible presence of water vapor in its atmosphere, marking one of the first such detections on a planet in the habitable zone. The habitable zone, often referred to as the Goldilocks zone, is the region around a star where conditions are just right for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface, not too hot and not too cold. The discovery of water in this zone is significant because liquid water is thought to be essential for life. These findings not only expand our understanding of where life could exist, but also challenge our perceptions of habitability, suggesting that life could thrive in a wide range of environments across the universe. Comets and asteroids Far from being mere space rocks and icy visitors, these objects are the keepers of the solar system's earliest secrets, including the origins of water on Earth. Comets, often described as dirty snowballs, are rich in ices, including water ice, mixed with dust and organic compounds. As they journey towards the sun, the warmth causes their ices to sublimate, releasing gas and dust to form their characteristic glowing comas and tails. This process, visible from Earth, has fascinated humans for millennia. But the significance of comets goes far beyond their beauty. Studies suggest that comets could have been a vital source of Earth's water, delivering it through impacts in the planet's early history. Asteroids, the rocky siblings of comets, also harbor water, primarily in the form of hydrated minerals. Carbonaceous chondrites, a type of stony meteorite that originates from asteroids, contain minerals that have been altered by water in the asteroid's past. These meteorites offer a direct sample of asteroidal material, showing that water was present in the building blocks of the solar system. The study of these ancient rocks provides evidence that asteroids, much like comets, 
could have contributed to Earth's water inventory. As we conclude our cosmic journey, a singular question resonates through the silence of space. Will water help us find life beyond Earth? The answer, while still veiled in the mysteries of the cosmos, leans towards a hopeful yes. Our exploration has unveiled water's ubiquitous presence across the universe, from the icy moons orbiting gas giants within our solar system to the distant, water-rich exoplanets circling alien stars. This pervasive presence of water is a beacon, guiding our quest for extraterrestrial life. In the quest to uncover life beyond our planet, water stands as the fundamental marker of habitability. Its role on Earth as the wellspring of life underscores our search for similar environments elsewhere in the cosmos. The discovery of water in liquid form on distant worlds significantly increases the potential for life, offering environments where biological processes as we understand them can unfold. Armed with advanced telescopes and pioneering space missions, we are now capable of detecting the faint signatures of water on planets and moons light years away. Techniques such as transit spectroscopy and direct imaging have revealed exoplanets with atmospheres that could contain water vapor. And within our own solar neighborhood, moons like Europa and Enceladus harbor vast oceans beneath their icy crusts. These discoveries are not mere points of data. They are the harbingers of worlds that may teem with life. The presence of water in these diverse celestial bodies provides compelling evidence that the conditions for life as we know it could be common in the universe. While the existence of water does not guarantee the presence of life, it significantly bolsters the case for habitable environments beyond Earth. The logic is simple yet profound. Where there is water, there could be life. So, as we stand at the brink of this vast, unexplored cosmic ocean, the answer to our question becomes clearer. Yes, water, the source of life on our blue planet, serves as our compass in the search for life in the universe. With each droplet of water discovered on a distant world, our hopes are renewed and our resolve strengthened. The search for extraterrestrial life, powered by our understanding of water's vital role, continues to push the boundaries of human knowledge and exploration. As we venture forth, let us remember that in the quest for life beyond Earth, following the water may one day lead us to discover we are not alone in the universe, and remember, the day we discover life beyond Earth will stand as the most monumental revelation in the history of humanity, a discovery that will forever alter our understanding of existence. And yet, what a profoundly awe-inspiring and indeed terrifying news it would be, reminding us of our place in the vast tapestry of the universe. <laughs>